I make more than $200,000 a year as a 22 year old software engineer and here's been my journey to get here. I'm not making this video to flex, but hopefully just to be informative and provide lots and lots of value. First, let's talk about my backstory getting into this field and for that, we need to rewind the clock. Going back to when I was about five years old, one day I remember my mom actually coming back from the bank with the calendar they had given her from the year 2006. And for some weird reason, I got super fascinated by it and I love the calendar so much much that one day my parents were just like randomly talking about one date, like some just random date coming up in conversation, May 2nd, 2006. And I was like, oh, that's a Tuesday. And I was right. And they were shocked. But I mean, of course, it could be a coincidence. So what's September 1st, 2006? And immediately I was like, oh, that's a Friday. I was right again. That's when I realized through my weird obsession, I actually started to memorize the calendar, but it's not like I just looked at the calendar and I just regurgitated what I saw, but rather I recognized patterns in that I noticed some months like August and May were similar in the structure of the days of their weeks. February and March were almost identical, but okay, why is pattern finding important for getting into tech? Well, that definitely laid the groundwork for my ability to think efficiently, which really helped me get really, really good at math going into middle school and high school. Because in math, everything is very formulaic and pattern-like. For example, if you do nine times seven, one way you can do it is add nine seven times and be like, okay, that's 63. But the better way to do it, you can just do 10 times seven and get 70 and then subtract seven from there and get 63 to find a quick solution. With this pattern finding and pretty good math background, in junior year of high school, I decided to take AP Computer Science. And other than the fact that I'm Indian and my dad told me to take this class, I actually really enjoyed it. It was literally perfectly aligned with my way of thinking. You see, in computer science, it's all about efficiency, pattern finding, and literally math. And at its core, you're solving problems and you write this thing called code to help you solve those problems as efficiently as possible. So I knew that this was the perfect field for me. And so I applied to colleges the following year as a computer science major. I was thankfully accepted into Georgia Tech in which I ended up pursuing a bachelor's and master's in computer science. Now let's talk about internships and let's actually talk about my salary progression in some of the internships I did and also what I learned because these were all experiences that really helped me build up my resume and portfolio to ultimately lead me to the $200,000 offer. My first internship was the summer of 2019 before freshman year of college. I worked at Howard Hughes Medical Institute in which I made $12 an hour as a data engineering intern. My project was super cool because I used different machine learning algorithms to predict fruit fly behavior. So basically we had a video of fruit fly moving its limbs based off of different light sources that were hitting it. And I had to train an algorithm that would take the coordinates of these limb joints as they're moving and ultimately predict the movements. It was actually not as much code as you would expect. It was more data collection processing and training. But the biggest reason I did this internship was to serve as legit tech experience that I could put on my resume. Because I knew as soon as I got to college, the hardest thing for freshmen to do is land an internship. And I knew I'd be so much further than everyone else if I had an internship already. And as you'll see, it paid out pretty well. The following summer of 2020, so after my freshman year of college, I worked at Amazon.com as a software engineering intern based in New York, although the internship was remote, so I was really at home. I made $45 an hour, plus got a $6,500 housing stipend, which was intended to use for relocation. But even though the job was remote, they let us keep that money. During the summer, I worked on this dashboard project to pull in internal metrics from various data sources, massage the data, process it, transform it, and display it in an interactive way for engineers to use. I use different AWS tools like S3, Lambda, Glue, DynamoDB to make a pipeline. And I do got to say it wasn't as heavy traditional coding. It was more configurations, organizations, but the little bit of coding I did was in SQL or SQL, Python and TypeScript. The following summer, I worked at a different tech company in which I made once again $45 an hour. And this internship was entirely remote. As a software engineering intern, I was given a lot of responsibility just as an intern and I loved it. I got to explore the back end and the front end of this project, so full fledged, that was ultimately shipped into production for customers to use worldwide. And personally, I love it when my plate is constantly full with different tasks I can chip away at. And given how complex this project was, it was perfect for that. In fact, it was going so well and I meshed very well with the team that at the end of the summer, they actually asked me to continue working on this project part time throughout the school year. So I signed up to work 20 hours a week up until Halloween of that year and I ultimately got to finish the project. Next, let's talk about coding projects because 
Another important component that helped me stand out to secure the $200,000 offer was my projects. And that is because projects are experiences and having done really good projects are kind of like working at Google or Facebook, but doing mediocre projects is like working at any other mediocre companies. I mean, obviously work experience is more valuable than projects, but you guys get the vibe. So two of my most impressive projects were the COVID-19 death predictor and tweet suite. So the death predictor project was actually my semester long project that I did in my graduate machine learning class. Effectively, it was during the heights of the pandemic and it was fall 2020 at the time. And pretty much we were given a data set of hundreds of countries profiles, information, population density, percent population over 65, percent population that smokes, pretty much any factor that posed as a pre-existing threat to be susceptible to COVID-19. Then given this data, we developed and hypertuned various regression and neural network based algorithms to determine the COVID-19 deaths. But also we found out which factors have the biggest importance levels to determining these debts. And this was a great project because it used a lot of machine learning, which is a hot technology, but we also got performance metrics like accuracy, precision, recall to add to our resumes and numbers on resumes are huge. And it's clearly very impactful because it was in the heights of the pandemic. The second project that I did was Tweet Suite, like I mentioned. This was my semester project that I did in my data visualization class in which my team and I developed a dashboard to determine how toxic a person was depending on on the different tweets they put out. So if there's someone who straight up curses every single day on Twitter, they would have a high toxic score and the user would probably be advised not to follow that person. We use the Google language API machine learning once again with the target being a toxic score. And also we developed this whole thing on this interactive UI on D3 in JavaScript. This was once again, pretty impactful. Everyone used Twitter and also it was diverse in the technology skill set, So it was an excellent thing to mention in interviews. So in conclusion, given all these projects and internships I did, this allowed me to build up a really strong resume and have good talking points in interviews. I literally had my whole resume filled out and excellent experiences to pull from. In fact, especially the Amazon internship, I was asked one time during an interview to explain about my experience working on Amazon and I literally just spammed all the different AWS resources that I said I worked on. Glue, crawlers, Lambda, S3, Dynamo. Typical interviewers don't really know much about it, so you're really impressing them. And the interviewer was literally just so flabbergasted that I got the offer. But ultimately when recruiting for full-time positions, I thankfully didn't have to worry too, too much. I pretty much just accepted my return offer at the end of my final internship. And like I said, I meshed well with my team. Everything was working well. My manager is awesome. And the work was just really, really fulfilling. A cherry on top of all that of work was remote. But of course, I couldn't have done all this if I didn't have prior experience to build me up. And if you're interested in software engineering, internships, project, and just general experiences, you might want to hit the subscribe button. Plus, if you're interested on in how I specifically landed my Amazon software engineering internship, check this video out right here.